Hello chaps and chapesses, and this week we're going to talk about walking softly and carrying a big stick. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is we're going to talk about stalking fish and actually trying to be a bit quiet. It often amazes me whether I'm on a flat skiff or whether I'm wading or whether I'm on the salmon river or whether I'm trout fishing on a chalk stream. They don't think that fish can hear them. After all, they are a wild animal. And quite often you'll see them wander up to the edge of the bank, thrash away, look down and go, oh, is it gone? Well, yes, of course it's gone. Because you've just like trampled all over its head. So in my mind, this breaks down into three different fields that I want to talk about. The first is saltwater, the second will be salmon fishing, and the third will be when you're trout fishing. These are the areas where I think actually a little quiet and a little stealth will probably help you catch more fish. So fish have this lateral line that runs down the side of their flank, and that allows them to feel vibration, whether it comes through the water from the bank or whether it comes down from a bang on a boat or whether they can feel the vibrations of you crunching on coral. So there's many different ways that that lateral line can let the fish know that you're coming. It's how they sense predators after all. So the first thing I want to talk about is if you're on a skiff. If you're on a skiff, try not to bang all over the boat. Don't drop things. Try not to stamp when you get up on the deck. All of these sounds are amplified through the hull of the boat and that will let the fish know that you're there before you even have a chance to make a cast of them. So try and keep banging and crashing to a minimum. Not only that, but it'll keep your guide happy too. Another of my pet peeves when you're on a flat skiff or you're on a boat is anchors. You see people grab an anchor, they rattle the anchor chain across the front of the deck and then they just chuck it over the side and then hop off and expect to see fish all around them. Well, quite frankly, you've spooked every fish for probably a four to 500 meter radius around the boat by that stage. Anchors are heavy, chains are noisy, especially on the deck of a skiff. So what you need to do is lift it up as carefully as you can, gently place it over the side and gently put it down into the water to, try to make as little noise as possible. That's gonna give you an advantage. Okay, so if you're not gonna fish from a skiff and you're going to embark on a long wade or something like that, then the next thing that I would advise you to do is to slide over the edge of the boat to enter the water. Don't take a massive leaping jump off the front. Firstly, you'll probably fall over flat on your face and give all your boat partners a great laugh, but also you will alert all the fish in the area to your presence. So what you want to try and think in your head is you are actually hunting these fish. You are trying to stalk them. So therefore, try and be a little bit stealthy. Slide over the edge into the water and you will help yourself immensely. Okay, so we've got off the boat, we've been quiet. So now what do we do? I see so many people start charging across the flat. They're throwing up white water with their legs. They're trying to get from A to B as quickly as possible and then wonder why they don't see any fish. When you are wading, you need to wade slowly and quietly. That means that you need to not break a surface froth around your thighs. You need to just move slowly through the water. Another top tip when you're on the flats is to slide your feet. So like when you are maybe hunting in a wood and you're hunting birds or some other animals, you need to move your feet carefully. Think about where you're placing your feet. So you move them, you slide them, and then you gently apply heel and toe. That stops you immediately crunching anything straight underneath you, and they can hear that crunch a long, long way away. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but what you can try and do is limit it as much as you can. If you find yourself wading around the coral heads, the other piece of advice I would give you is wade around them, don't try and walk over the top of them. Because what happens is, firstly, you raise your profile, and you silhouette yourself up against the skyline so the fish can see you from much, much further away, but also you're more likely to fall off and create a big splash, and you're also more likely to lose your footing and probably break a piece of coral or make more crunching noises. So what I tend to do is to walk around the coral heads. Always take the lowest form of path that you can find because you are much less likely to create a disturbance by doing that. So when you're actually fishing on the flats, Try to avoid making a large quantity of false casts. 
try and make your first cast your best, but this constant false casting, quite often I see people slapping the water as they're doing that. The, fly, the line goes down, and then they rip it up again, and then they put it down again, and then they rip it off the surface again, and then they put it down again, each time trying to gain some more distance. It's a much better idea to try and pick the fly up, do one or two false casts, and then put it down on your intended target. The other advice that I would give you is if you are trying to gain distance and range, and you're trying to range where you want to put the fly down, cast at a slight angle or tangent, lengthen your line, get the right length, and then your last cast put down in the direction of the fish. You're far less likely then to spook it with line flash in the air or a bad false cast slapping the surface. When you're moving around in the flats environment, try not to make large splashing noises. And there is a very simple reason for this because not only is it going to spook your target and your prey species, but it might just interest slightly less desirable creatures which are on those flats and are attracted by splashing, i.e. sharks. You don't want to attract their attention and they will zone in on that from a very long way away. Lastly, on the stealth front on the flats, the other thing that I tend to do is if I'm casting to a bonefish or a triggerfish or something like that, and I think that I'm getting a bit close, then what I do is I start ducking down onto one or two knees. Sometimes I'll crouch down even lower. If a triggerfish is following the fly towards me, I'll get down, almost down onto the water surface to create as low a profile as possible. And that means the fish will actually almost come within your rod tip and you can still try and catch them. A lot of people I see standing up and they're thrashing around like that and then the fish just comes in, sees the angler and boom, gone. So moving on to salmon fishing. I spent a lot of time guiding in Norway and I was always amazed by the number of people who turned around to me and said, oh, salmon don't mind, salmon just lie in their lies and they don't worry about people banging and crashing on the side of the bank. You know, they'll just come and take the fly anyway. No, they won't. They're fish. They're wild creatures. They're just like every other fish species that we hunt. Having sat and observed a lot of salmon pools, when they have been left alone for a long period of time, you will often find that the fish will actually be lying right up against the edge of the pool. And the number of times that you then see an angler come into the top of the pool and he blunders into the water and starts casting and thrashing away and you just see all the fish come off the edges and come straight into the deeper water in the middle. That's obviously where they feel safe from predators, so that's where they head away but preferably they like to remain on the edges. So let's next talk about actually getting onto a pool and the best way to move into a position where you start fishing. Quite often when you approach a pool, you have to approach it from downstream before you can get up and start fishing it. So what I recommend that you do is stay as far away from the river as possible and walk up the outside to get to the top of the pool. Don't be tempted to walk up the pool and peer into the water to see if you can see a fish. That's the first thing that's going to spook any fish which you are trying to catch. The other thing that I always do, which I was taught by an old friend in Norway, is don't look at the water because actually the flash of sun from your white face, well especially my white face, can actually be enough to alert a salmon to your presence. So if I'm walking up the side, I always tend to look low and I look away from the river. Not only can I gauge where I'm actually going to put my feet to make as little noise as possible, but it also means I'm less likely to spook fish with the flash of my face. Again, if you're entering up from the bottom of a pool or you're accessing a pool and you know that you are going to be walking over some fairly large rocky areas, some which may be a bit loose, um, a Norwegian river is a prime example of this, then always take the lowest path. Walk on the low rocks rather than the high ones. Just like when you are saltwater fishing, you want to keep your profile and silhouette as low as possible. And also you are less likely to disturb loose rocks, create bangs and crashes, which are going to send vibrations into the pool. Because if a fish is hanging at the lower end of the pool and it's a bit shallower, obviously the shallower the water, then the greater the cone of vision that the fish have. So they can see much further. And fish can see a very long way, much further than we probably anticipate they can. The other thing that I always do is if I know that that is the point I'm going to start fishing, I actually start putting the fly in right against the edge of the bank. Because quite often the fish are still in the edge. If you've had a stealthy approach, then those fish could literally be lying underneath your feet. So I will often actually stand maybe 10 yards back from the edge of the river, and I will start casting and putting a fly right in against the edge. 
Then when I feel that I have covered the immediate water in the vicinity, I will move up slowly towards the bank, the edge of the bank, and slowly enter into the river as quietly as possible. And at that point, it's, it's just common sense to always fish close in, lengthening your line each time so that you systematically cover the water that's immediately in front of you. The number of times where you see someone throw on their waders and wade out into the middle of the river up to their waist and just start thrashing around all over the place, a bit like Mask of Zorro going all over the place, and then you think, there's just no way you're gonna, you're gonna intercept a fish, either that it's gonna be blind or deaf or stupid or both. And when I'm salmon fishing, I always try and keep a low profile. And if that means that I'm not going to stand at my full height, then quite often I will duck down and keep a low angle profile. The lower you can be, the better. It just makes sense. Always move slowly. When you are moving down a river and you are fishing systematically down as you go, move slowly. No sudden movements. Try not to move too quickly. Move your feet purposefully so that you disturb the bank as little as possible. At the end of the day, as I said before, you are hunting these fish, and it, therefore it is important that you remain quiet at all times. The biggest challenges are often very shallow pools which have no cover on either side, no high banks. Prime example of this is some of the, uh, some of the pools that you'll find on the Icelandic rivers, where you actually even have to fish from maybe 10 yards back. So I'm not afraid of casting a line where the half the fly line is still, is still lying on the bank when I know that the tip of the line is fishing through. Always fish like that to begin with before you then approach and then you start casting further out. Lastly, when it comes to salmon fishing, always wear subdued clothing. I know this seems to make perfect sense to most of us, but the number of times you see someone turn up on a salmon river and they're wearing a bright red hoodie and a white baseball cap and then wonder why they don't catch any fish. So lastly, I wanna talk about trout fishing, mostly from a chalk stream perspective because that's mostly what I do. Quite often, a bit like salmon fishing, invariably where you park your car is at the top of the beat and as you are going to fish upstream, you need to get to the bottom of the beat. Invariably, that means you've got to walk the length of the river. So if you can get outside the fence and walk through the field and then back around again, so much the better, but otherwise you want to tuck as far away from the river as possible. Again, I like to not peer into the river to see what I might catch because invariably, if you're walking down the river, all the fish are looking upstream, they're looking straight at you, you're gonna spook them. So you want to leave those fish as undisturbed as possible. So stay way out, come down quietly, duck down, and just work your way quietly down the path, especially if there's a return path, which is even better get down to the bottom, then come in slowly, peer over the edge, make sure that there's nothing immediately underneath you, and then start fishing close in, and then you can start working your way up the river. And that way, you're going to avoid spooking every single fish on the beat before you get down to your starting point. Again, when I'm on a river, I quite often walk heel to toe, it's a technique that I learned a long time ago when I was learning how to stalk. It allows you to maintain a very solid base, but also very quiet. On the bank of the river, then those vibrations of people thumping up and down the bank will pass straight through and they will spook wild fish for sure. Stockies, maybe not so much, but wild fish, they'll be gone and then they'll spook. As they spook up the river, they'll spook every other fish up for the next 300 meters. Again, like salmon fishing, the lower the water, the further the trout can see. So if you're fishing a light riffle in between a couple of pools, make sure you start as far back as possible. You wanna keep as far away from the fish as you can. So if you have the ability to cast a bit further, that can help. It means you can cast up and down the river and get yourself some distance. Or if you're going to approach a fish or you're going to French nymph or Euro nymph style, then you need to get right down and approach the fish and get behind the cover so that they cannot see you as you then start putting the fly over the top of them. Bright clothing is not gonna do you any favors here either. So try and keep it subdued to greens and olives and drab colors, which are less likely to give away your position. And the other thing which I have noticed is that actually even jewelry can spook fish. If you are wearing, um, well, obviously if I'm wearing earrings or rings and various other accoutrements that I would normally wear, then um, I tend to leave those in the car and then 
you are less likely to, a flash of light will actually uh, spook a fish further up the river. So I mentioned earlier, I like to try and keep as low as possible. Quite often that means I end up crawling up the side of a bank on my knees. Um, another top tip is to maybe get some knee pads. There are some couple of manufacturers that make really good little knee pads which will save your waders from dragging up and down various nasty banks. It's, it's a really useful way to crawl up the bank. You can just slide your knees up and you can get very close to fish without spooking them. As per most styles of fly fishing, try to false cast as little as possible. Try not to thrash the water to a foam. The number of times that I have been with people on a river where they thrash the fly down, slap the line down on the water and then they go, is the fish still there? And you're just like, well, no, I'm afraid it's not. It is no longer here. It has left the building because of the amount of noise you were making. If you miss your target with your cast, then I would highly recommend that you let the fly drift down past the fish a certain amount before you then recast. Quite often I see people snatch the fly immediately off the water and it creates a disturbance which will spook the fish. If you've missed that target first time round, Slow down, take your time. Just wait until it's a couple of feet behind and then slowly lift it off before putting it back down again. And last but not least, try not to line the fish. Fly lines can often land with a bit of a thump. So try and gauge your length so that the leader is always going to be between the fly and the fish. If you slap the end of the fly line down on the fish, he's not gonna hang around very long. And that doesn't matter if it's in the salt or whether you're on a salmon river or you're on a trout stream. As always, I hope you found those tips useful. Please leave some comments below and tell me what you think. There will be a lot of things that I haven't thought of. Please let me know what you think and the other tips that you use. In the meantime, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.